in this video, let's talk a little bit about the basics of the swing plane, because I think a little greater understanding of this concept is going to help you hit the ball longer and straighter off the tee. So stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. I continue on my journey to hit the ball longer and straighter, both off the tee and all the way through to the green than ever before, because that's just what makes golf fun. So if you agree, I hope you'll join me. Hit the subscribe button and like the video if you got something out of it. Okay, so to demonstrate some basics of the swing plane, got to enlist the aid of a stick and a circle here, a line and a circle, a hula hoop and an alignment stick. I'll just drop my driver over here. Now let's take a look at a couple of basic swing plane ideas. So if the orange stick becomes our target line, this ends up what we would call tangent to this swing circle. Now, got to keep in mind here that a circle or an arc is kind of a crude representation of what is actually happening with the club head through your swing, just like a stick figure drawing uh, would represent the Mona Lisa. So just remember it's a good visual, but it's still not exact. It's not really a circle, but it is circular. Let's look at a shallow swing plane or a flatter swing plane. I would lay the hula hoop down further like this. This would be a style you might see like a Ben Hogan or more recently you might see like a Matt Kuchar swinging on a plane like this. But what I want to point out about this shallower plane, notice that, you know, not just the position at the top will look flatter, but from your perspective as a golfer, notice that right here, the club will appear or feel to you like it's approaching the ball from more severely on the inside. Also, upon impact and after impact, you'll see the club will exit back around low and to the left much more rapidly than would a more upright plane swing. So as I lower this down, lower and lower, you'll see it means that the exit of the club will be much lower and around to the left. And this is a really key feel for a lot of golfers out there to have if they're not swinging as shallow as they want. Now, you might take a look now at a more vertical or less shallow swing like a Jack Nicklaus. He would have been fallen in the category of being a bit more vertical. Now notice here that the, sure, at the top of the swing, the club would be a little bit higher at the, just maybe above the Hogan glass. And notice down at the bottom, the club is going to appear to come in to the ball a little bit less on a curve and exit on a little milder of a curve. And yet still you can see that the club head is still approaching from an arc going through the entire impact zone on an arc. It'll just be less severe, more mild than the flatter swing plane. Now the most common swing plane for the average golfer to be on, even some good golfers, make the mistake of being on a swing plane of much too vertical and to the left. So this is kind of our, our over the top and steep swing. And this can be the cause of not only, of course, outside in path, but because the plane is so vertical on the way down, it makes it much more difficult to get the face of this, the club square to either the path that it's traveling on or the target line. Often we'll leave this club way open and the ball heads out into the right trees. That's our typical slice, or in some cases, a block. Now you can see that the exit in a tall out to in swing is nicely around to the left and fairly low, but the approach into the ball is completely different. So if you're on this type of swing plane and you tend to pull it, block it, slice it, well, 
got to figure out how you're going to get the rest of the swing to lay down and come from the inside more. In fact, you might even want to feel some exaggeration with the path being inside to out. So I would try to swing a bunch of times something like on this plane. Now, what would that look like with a club in my hand? Well, the vertical and over the top looks something like this. And so the opposite of that would be something like this. So if you suffer from a big either heels, block slices, and you might try a drill where you feel really coming from low, approaching the inside. Now let's cover one more swing plane error that's very common, especially among better golfers. And that's a swing where they get too much like what I just suggested for the slicers. They get their plane too shallow and too far inside to out, something like this. And so now that club is going to tend to want to bottom out a little too early. You get a lot of drop kicks and fat shots, but you would also get a swing path that's a little bit too far into out. That's going to result in a lot of pushes, and subsequently it's going to uh, give you probably a lot of bad hook shots too. So I have a lot of students that tend to fall into this pattern too. Overly shallow and inside out. All right, hey, I hope that illuminates a little bit more about the basics of the swing plane. I would love for you to have a greater understanding of the different shapes that a swing can make so that when you'd like to improve your swing, hopefully you'll be able to put some good feels to it because different swing shapes are going to come with different feels depending on where you're coming from. All right, I'm going to do a little bit more practicing on my swing plane, but thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve. And if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.